Hello, today my lecture is on tricuspid valve on TE screening for transcatheter edge to edge repair, or so called T tier. Here are my disclosures. So, for tricuspid tier screening, you need to look at which leaflets are involved and how many leaflets. Is the leaflet length adequate for grasping? Are the leaflets severely thickened or severely tender? that could limit the ability for grasping and leaflet insertion. Is the TR lead induced or associated or not related at all? Where is the TR jet? Is it eccentric and what are the gaps? How horizontal is the right ventricle? Is there acoustic shadowing from other structures such as aortic valve, mitral valve or right ventricular lead? And finally, the prominence and presence of the eustachian valve. Here's some of the pre-procedural TE screening checklists. We'll start with the top left, which is the four-chamber view. This is the RV inflow X-plane to grasping view. This is a deep esophageal X-plane view and with color. This is a transgastric on force view, X-plane. And this is with the color. And here is the 3D on force with multiplatin reconstruction and with color. And you can see that here with the MPL or multiplanar reconstruction showing the grasping views. Here's another table of what the views you need to acquire during the screening. As I mentioned before, for chamber meet esophageal, I'll be inflow outflow explained with a sweep or turning grasping with the deep esophageal 140 to 180 and mid esophageal as well. You can see you have a deep esophageal four chamber view, transgastric short axis, deep gastric uh, with short axis, and 3D and multiplanar reconstruction, MPR. Now, in terms of intra procedural imaging consideration, you need to align the plane of the analyst perpendicular to the insulation beam. And the mid esophageal or deep esophageal GE junction views are typically the best imaging for leaflet grasping, as well as 3D reconstruction or clip positioning. You should avoid views that have caused acoustic shattering of the leaflet tips, especially in a situation where you need to uh, be in transgastric and you want to use 3D color Doppler to assess the residual TR. So here are the key views. First, you need to have mid and deep esophageal alveolar inflow and explain to grasping view. And you can see that how that's done here. And you can see this example, this is the more posterior septal here because it's closer to the uh, uh, RV free wall. This is mid portion of the trachea sclerosis is more central, anterior septal. And then here is more anterior septal, which is mid segment closer to the aortic valve, AKA the septum. Transgastric, short axis, you can see that here, you can identify how many leaflets the tricuspid valve have, what the gap and where the jet is located. In terms of the Anatomy, you can see that this is a classic surgeon's view or looking at the tricuspid valve. Anterior is the front, posterior is on the bottom right, and septal is right bottom left. You can see the triangle coke here. Now, in echo, you rotate this 180 degrees to now, the anterior is the bottom left, septal is on the right, and then the posterior is on the top left. That's how you can delineate the transgastric view on the short axis in echo. Now, there are a number of challenging in, uh, challenges imaging the tricuspid valve. You can see that this, this, this esophagus here, but of course, you know the tricuspid valve is away from the esophagus, so you need to have uh, minimized your acoustic showering from adjacent structures. So you can see that here, that the mesophageal view highlights the different types of the tricuspid leaflet in terms of the septal illustrating yellow and anterior being blue versus posterior being green, and you can see how it, this will beam differently as you go from a zero degree, explain to a 90 degree, which is more like an inflow view. The transgastric view, you can see that here, when you wrote, if you explain that, you'll get a on false view. You can see the deep gastric view here at A, B, C, D, four different locations. The, the, the other challenges to check as view anatomy is that they're often scallops or deep indentation that looks like actually more than one segment or leaflet. You can see that here, 
uh, on the left side, looks like there are three clearly demarcated leaflets versus here you have seen multiple scallops, looks like actually maybe four, even five segments of leaflets. And so you need to look at three-dimensional imaging. And you can see that here with middle esophageal view, deep esophageal and shallow transgastric view to be able to really see how many leaflets there are on the tricuspid. You can see that the other challenge here is the TE problem device relationship. While your esophagus is here, your device is actually more in the SBC IVC area facing the tricuspid valve. And so you can see the shadowing of the posterior lateral annulus is possible, especially with an annuloplasty device. So what the solution is to have 3D MPR for edge-to-edge -edge repair, you can see that here by doing so, you actually get all four views simultaneously and you work off with 2D views that have to be high quality. So now here on the top left, you see it's an inflow view. And when you explain that to the red box, you can see that now it's a grasping view. Here you can see the on false view of a transgastric light projection showing orientation, and finally the 3D. If you form a transgastric view, your grasping view could be on the bottom left. You can see that like that. And then your uh, orientation view could be on the top left because that's the transgastric uh, on false view. And you can see the perpendicular view on the top right. Now, this is a probe manipulation. You can see upper esophageal, mid esophageal, transgastric, or deep gastric. I'm not an echo imager, so I will not dwell on this. But the most important part is when you articulate the retroflexion, you see how this is the mitral valve. And you can see that by interflexion, you see a bit more of the appendage. And then you can see that the right flexion, then see the tricuspid valve with the RV info explained, left flexion. You see another image well. Antiflexion, you see the transgastric short axis view, and the right antiflexion, you see that very well as well. So, in terms of the mid-esophage view, I mentioned already, these are some of the views that we looked at. And also, there's a new nomenclature proposed looking at the different classification based on the number of leaflets present. And so the most common one are the type one, which is three leaflet, but the second most common, interestingly, is the type three B with the two posterior leaflets. So it's the quadricuspid valve. And this is an example of that. Looking at the type three B quadricuspid, you can clearly see there's a deep indentation or segment separating P1 and P2. And you can see that here on the 3D on false uh, true view. And this is actually patient went to the operating room and you can see actually the morphology matches what you see in an echo on the surgeon's view that I showed you earlier. So now this, this is clearly a type one and you can see there's a, a beating heart model that simulates the same with the lead. You can see that here, type two, you can see basically is more or less like a two leaflet valve, by leaflet valve. And then type three A with two anterior leaflets, which should be rather unusual, type three B, which is a two posterior leaflet. This is more common. In type three C, you can see two septal leaflets, which is rather rare. This is the common show here. And then finally, type four with a five leaflet configuration. And these are probably likely the most difficult to do here because of the multi scallop anatomy. So let me show you a case here. This is a patient with severe TR with a two to three centimeter millimeter gap. And you can see this is a nice transgastric view showing the width out and width color looking the anatomy of the orientation. This is another view showing that. And this is a transgastric X plane. You don't necessarily grasp on this plane, but certainly it's very helpful. And sometimes uh, before 3D or MPR become widely available, this used to be one of the key grasping views. And of course, you have the standard four chamber view they want to see in this leaflets. And you want to look at the 45 degree X plane to show the RV inflow. And then the X plane on the grasping here with this is without and with color. This is RV inflow view, which is a standard view without X plane. This is a 140 to 180 reverse four chamber view looking at the, the area of 
that you likely be grasping. And now this is the key work wing view, which I'll be inflow outflow and explain to anterior septal here uh, at mid area. And you can see this is now more central in the middle. And then it is now posterior septal by moving the cursor from the aortic valve side, which is the septal side, to the lateral wall side. And of course, this is the posterior septal now with the cursor across there. Of course, 3D on false can be important if you can get the imaging quality. Uh, you want to see how many leaflets there are and where the jet is localized, particular location of the leads. However, 3D MPL of the transgastric, you can see that here that's kind of a grasping view, as I mentioned before, but you can also MPL off a mid esophageal, deep esophageal uh, inflow explain view as well. It's just the orientation of the images would be different. So here's the case number two. This is severe TR, two to three millimeter gap with type 3B or two posterior leaflet. You can see that here quite well with a quadricuspid valve. Again, the same view. This is trying to scratch it. Explain. Now when we color, you can see where you can make some of this lead to generate a valve on four chamber field degree. You can see the RV inflow. The 140 to 180. And the same again, looking at both valves are billowing into the F atrium. And of course, this is the key view of inflow explained to anterior septal by the commissure. This is more middle now of the valve. This is now more central. And this is now posterior septal. So you can understand the jet location, the co-optation reserve, and also the clipping strategy. And you can see that here again. On false 3D is uh, relatively useful if you can get good images. So you can see that here, this is the MPL now. You can see very nice images of a case number three, a massive TR, a little bit wider gap now. You can see that here in the middle. View it again. You can see where the jet is located. And the MPL of the transgression looks fantastic. You can see the leaflets very well here. So this would be a potential view for grasping. And you can see the other ones in terms of how the clip orientation will look like. You can see the color presence as well. So you can see the four chamber here. Restricted the septal leaflet, but you know, certainly goes to the systole near the annulus. And you can see this patient is torrential TR. You can see very horizontal right ventricle as well. So you can see that here in full explain now, we start with close to the aortic valve and the septum, and you can see how it looks. And then as you move towards the center, towards the mid now, anterior septal, the septal leaf is longer, so make it more likely easier to grasp. So you can see a little lot of TR there. This is now central. Certainly that would be a primary target is to approach the anterior septal first because it's more easy the image, but also in terms of the device getting there in a more coaxial manner without losing height. And you can see that here, the posterior septal crossing. 3D on fossil dimension can be important and useful. You can get the image down. And of course, MPR, you can see this time is MPR of the mid esophageal inflow explained. You can see very nice images of the inflow that explain it. So you can actually use this view to grasp. And this is kind of the on force view for you. And here it is. This is a fourth case. This is a torrential TR, much larger gap, and actually lead right at the uh, anterior septal commissure or draping there. You can see that it's crossing the tricuspid valve in the triassic view. You can see again the MPL view, it looks fantastic and able to see the grasping position and the you know, false view as well. So seal degree here, you can see the leaflet coming in and out of view on the, on the septum. Info explained is going to be probably better. Let's see here. You do see some of the leaflets there with the long septal leaflet. The lead is kind of tucked into this area. 
So, but we start with anterior septal and throughout sweep. You can see that here, there's a bit of a jet there, but also the lead is that you want to stay away. And then, so now you see there's no jet, it's kind of coming in and out of view. But this is probably where I would start. This is posterior septal now, same principle. Now, 3D on false, you can see that here, highly regurgitant. So how do I assess tier difficulty with the tricep G4 system? Well, I kind of break it down into green, yellow, and then orange slash red zone, similar to mitral tier with mitral clip. So we determine by number of leaflets. If there are three, it's more straightforward than four to five. If the septal leaflet is long, it's going to be all more easily to grasp. If it's the septal leaflet tether, it's not much, that's going to be easier. If the smaller gap is always easier than bigger gaps, you can see here beyond 10 is going to be more challenging. These are some of the triluminate uh, exclusion criteria based on anatomy. A co-optation reserve you know, should be good. However, you can still do it if it's fair, but it'll be very hard if it's poor, and I'll show you what that means. Now, if there's survival of course in the grasping zone, you gotta be very careful, uh, especially it's gonna make the uh, grasping more challenging, number one, because it might knock you off the grasping in terms of insertion, leaflet insertion, and two, you might end up having a side bite in grasping cords or other structures, making it more difficult to validate that you have a successful grasp. Poisonal so RV should be absent in green cases, same as RV lead. And of course, no shadowing of the septal leaflet. So here's the example of the coaptation reserve. If you have a symmetric V like this, it's kind of like mitro. It should be very easy for the uh, clip to come up on the same plane as the leaflet. So you can just drop the grippers and close the clip. Now here is a little trickier because one of the, sept the septal leaflet itself is more tethered. So you almost have to do a bit of a hook uh, and, and, and almost the opposite uh, septal hugger so that you can hook it and bring it to the anterior leaflet so it can close together. And then finally, you can see this the flattened V, which is very hard to treat, very poor coefficient reserve. So even though you try to grasp it, you have to probably independently do so because you can't just open the clip to a 180 degrees and drop the grippers because remember the grippers are only down to about 120 or so. So here's an example here on orientation. This is certainly a reasonable orientation for tricuspid tier, but look at how more horizontal this is, and that can have an impact on deliverability uh, and also the ease of implant. So in summary, the systematic TEE evaluation is key to determine anatomic feasibility of tricuspid tier and case difficulty. Ideally, T should be done under cardiac anesthesia supervision or some kind of anesthesia supervision to allow a deeper sedation to minimize any respiratory movement or variation or patient discomfort so you can get the best quality images possible and to kind of mimic uh, under general anesthesia during the procedure. So your, your image is going to be more stable and so you don't have to spend a lot of time acquiring. Now the proposition is a key to acquire the optimal images. So you need to explore the various patient positions such as tilting the patient to the left, or changing the proposition during the screening echo. And finally, images who do the TEE during the procedures should probably be the same as the one doing the screening because they then have a reference point of how they will image that particular case, whether it's gonna be straightforward, whether it'll be challenging, uh, what tips and tricks were used during the initial screening to make the images better. And so that way, if you have the same imager, he or she will know that very well and that will make the procedure more efficient uh, and also the pre-procedural TE uh, more easily done and more systematically done. And of course, as I mentioned before, for the procedure itself, uh, the imager has to have floral uh, visible so that they know what the implant is doing with the tier device and vice versa, where the uh, tier operators also need to see the TE images in real time, as well so they can communicate the same uh, reference languages. So on that note, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention for this presentation.